Welcome to another week. So unprofessional. Yeah. I'm Gus. I'm Ish. Mark's dad. But you knew that already. Maybe they did it. International man of mystery. What mystery? And a great lover. A great, great, great lover. He did. The women I love. loved. You just hate it, bro. You should. Just yo, just you gotta find the land. I'm playing a mystery. What the fuck? You, I, at some point, like, you either got you gotta find that medium like in between the Diggy and the and, and, and get there. You understand know what, what I'm like saying? George Jefferson. Like, it's like a medium a between hating and Diggy. You need to find that medium and have a fucking seat. I thought I had because, a happy medium. Nah, because right now, I, hate I said I'm an international man of mystery and a great lover. And you you start hating. Have you talked to any of the women that I've loved? That's what I'm saying. Shut the fuck up. No. I just wanted to say that. So it doesn't seem like you need to shut up, but I don't have anything else to say. I know you don't. They, they keep blaming America for the sin of slavery, but the truth is, throughout human history, slavery has existed, and America came along as the first country uh, to end it within 150 years. And we get no credit for that to move forward and try and make well, good we, on we that. Well, we did have a, a very bloody civil yeah. war. We're over that and issue. We also, and we also have years are a long the, time. The, the racial to history, and the end remnants end of the civil war, right. particularly blacks in the South, Correct. Yes. That, that was not and an easy path. Still, I mean, that was bloody. Were you and there, violent bitch? and deadly. And there were Native and Americans we here when we that. showed up. Yeah. We're yeah. still, we my, my point no, is no that we were the country black that woman decided to say. end Nothing. it, and we're still dealing with the issue, but if you want to start a problem and to inflame racial tension even more, start blaming people who have nothing to do with slavery for the sin of slavery. That is not fair, that's not the American way, and we shouldn't be doing it. The American way is robbing, <laughs> stealing, killing, and raping. <laughs> what the fuck is she talking about? She didn't have social studies. Yo, man, first of all, this was this what gets me <laughs> fucking... This really my gears. This is the shit that really bursts my fucking doilies <laughs> about these motherfucking new age fucking <laughs> millennial colonizers. First off, you didn't... You, you fought to quote-unquote end slavery, but then came up with sharecropping where the slaves <laughs> stopped the being slaves, but were still <laughs> slaves for minimal to no money. You went from, I'm going to whip your ass for you to work in my field, to you can live in the same slave house, and we give you next to nothing to do the same duties that you had to do when I was whipping your ass to do it. Then you come up it's with... It's a different title, though. Same, same punishment. Yeah, but... Yeah, same outcome. Feel no, feel better same outcome. Sick. Then you come up with these fucking secret laws, the Jim Crow laws, that everybody knows what the fuck they are to treat people a certain type way. Like, she got some motherfucking nerve. Like, yeah, slavery existed before America, but that shit wasn't as brutal. That shit wasn't as brutal. Like, back in the day, motherfucker come kill your whole town, make everybody slaves in your town. They had to work the fields and shit like that, but they still had decent living quarters. They still was able to like, 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 motherfuckers try to paint that picture like Pharaoh was that bad on the original Jews. He wasn't that bad on the original Jews. Moses just wanted the motherfuckers to be free. He's like, all right, nigga, we done built shit for you, let us go. I don't think we can talk about that. Why? I don't think we're anti-Semitic. They were black. I can talk about black Jews. Only white Jews say we anti-Semitic. Because we know who the you real can't Jews tell, are. You can't tell the truth, though. I am going to tell the truth. Exactly. This bitch sat on TV and said, <laughs> you guys are blaming America <laughs> for slavery. In America. Bitch, you did it. <laughs> who did it? The worst part is the white woman that defended, I mean, not defended, opposed what she was saying. Black woman was like, and then you got the job. yeah, the, the talking <laughs> nigga chick is like, I'm not gonna talk because if I talk, I'm getting fired today. You understand what I'm saying? They like, pay me too much for this. Like, this, shit. like that shit is bullshit. Like, bro, at the end of the day, bro, 
slavery in America is like the worst, one of the worst additions of slavery in world history. If the white was held accountable for what he did to the black man and the black woman, they would face international crimes against humanity. These motherfuckers will find a 90-year-old Nazi and put them in jail for crimes against humanity because some white Jews, and I'm not being anti-sensitive to the Holocaust and shit, but you starved them and you gassed them. Bro, we'd have been lucky to get that. They was castrating us. They was buck breaking us, meaning that the whole neighborhood watched you fuck the biggest and strongest black man in that crowd. You was raping our, raping our women and then taking the kids from them and selling them off to somebody else. You would let them get married on the plantation so you could fuck the wife after they get married. Fuck this, Gus. That shit got me mad, bro. Word is born. Something Jesus. bad happened into a college. Is it that I am blessed and highly favored by you? I am the object of your affection. Your favor what? surrounds me as a shield, it's and the first thing that people come in contact with is my favorite shield. Thank you that I have favor with you and man today. All day long, people go out of their way to bless and to help me. I have favor with everyone that I deal with today. Doors that were once closed are now open for me. I receive preferential treatment. I have special privileges. I am God's favored child. No good thing will he withhold from me. Because of God's favor, my enemies cannot triumph over me. I have supernatural increase and promotion. I declare restoration of everything the devil has stolen from me. I have honor and... Oh, Max is back. He preaching. You ever hear of the uh, Sunday service that Kanye does? I don't want—I don't want to hear that blasphemous, that blasphemy from Kanye West. That was DMX. DMX was just high as shit. He's back home. He got himself together. No, DMX is higher than the motherfucker. Talking some dope king shit. <laughs> he's <laughs> preaching the word. Man. He's preaching the word on heroin. <laughs> you look like he's back out in Queens. And in a positive light. His clothes is clean. Not his blood toxin. Well, he's in jail for a while. He's that motherfucker high as shit. I ain't listening to that shit. He started using the metaphysical superpower. Nah, bruh. You, you <laughs> done, somebody done passed you a bag. Get the fuck out of here, man. Uh, I before, man. That motherfucker high. You ain't never heard a dope fiend just talk that shit to you? Like, It'd be the longest shit ever, too. Dope fiend start telling you, yo, I had this car shit to go to Harvard, man. I was <laughs> dis I was dissecting motherfucking cats. They had just died and shit. And it was 32 arteries and 206 bones in the human body and all sorts of shit. Hey, bruh, they trying to hear that shit cop and roll. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Ho? DMX, high. And that's my guy, one of my favorite rappers. He's high in that video. I know, I thought it was, I thought it was gonna make you feel better. Bro. Nah, it doesn't make me feel better to see another black man high. Maybe you should high on the Lord. High on heroin <laughs> and speaking about the Lord. Make a difference. I bust that ass, didn't I? You know I laid that shit down like white man's hair, bye. Yeah, okay. Oh, so you the one back there fucking my grandson like you got something to prove. Well, what's your name? My name is Driz. Your mother ain't named you that. What's your real name? Hot ass. Well, that's my nickname. Turn around. Let me see. Let me look at you. I don't even know why you hooting and hollering like that. You ain't even got no ass. Girl, that thing flat is this motherfucking banister right here. Uh-huh. Do me a favor. Uh, go down to the gas station and play my numbers, and you can keep the change and buy yourself a new pussy, cause it's beat up. So we here with our special guest for this evening. Yep, Miss Drizzy. Hello, how y'all doing? What up, dog? Hello, y'all. What's going on? For the second time. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know. Oh, they it's don't. a whole different platform. 
Oh, oh shit. I mean, well, I'm, yeah, well, I'm meeting you again then. For the first time. For the first okay, time. for the first time. Solid. Oh, proceed. They're going to know that when they see this fucking outfit. But let's no. go. The other one's ready. Yet. The same shit twice. Well, fuck it. Who cares? I mean, the I, mean I just said it. Okay. I mean, you wear the same thing twice. You wear what you, you want to wear, man. You can. So you're going to get big and be, become one of them people that can't wear Nah, the same I'm thing. definitely going to wear the same thing twice. But, you know, I was just bringing it to the light. Sorry. Okay. Didn't mean to be out with guys. Solid. So, so we know what you do. Mm -hmm. Tell the people what you do. Yeah. Um, I do comedy. I write short films. I do skits. Got some YouTube. Mm -hmm. Do a little bit of everything. Yeah. So I'm working. Come on that comedy game of Philly, huh? Yeah, man. I'm trying to get world renowned, though. You know, I mean, Philly, I got this shit on lot, but you know, it's time to take it to the next level. That's it. Okay. You know? Level up. You know? Everybody's like, yeah, you're the best in Philly. I always take it as a compliment as a woman because mm -hmm. it's like, cool, but it's more than just my city. So. so, how did you get started with comedy? Um, I actually met uh, a good friend of mine who started off doing like YouTube, and we started working with each other because um, he developed his character. Asia Star, and that's how I got really started, and um, started like writing for the character, you know, coming together and doing like skits with him, and the first video that I did went viral, like right now I think it's at like one million views now, but it was like eight years ago, so I just was like, oh, um, this video is funny as shit, I'm gonna just keep it going, so that was like my inspiration, like damn, for my first video to go crazy. What video was that? Um, shit Philly Girl Say. Yeah, I remember that goofy shit. Yeah, it was goofy as fuck. And we did, we just did it in the basement. Like, yeah. I was like, fucking in my teens. So I was just like, I did it and it just went wild. So what's some of the shit Philly girls say? So was you the one talking about her boots were smoking? Right. All right. That's what I'm saying. That See? was hilarious too. See, Lou shit. Front front earlier, huh? I, I was out trying to front. I, but he just didn't know. He's I didn't like, know. Didn't I was, know. Yeah, I was younger. When A lot I, of people I, don't know. That shit was funny as shit though. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. I mean, you drawing. Everybody say you drawing. I guess I believe that. No, he was drawing. Yeah, he did. So, her boots were smoking. <laughs> I mean, it was some weird shit. We improved a lot of that shit. Yeah, that shit was and it funny. Was fun. hell, it was funny as shit. It was real fun. I couldn't, I couldn't get past. The wigs, the guy. But he would have yeah. said he started that wave, though. Like, that was a long ass time ago. He was like one of the first people I've seen that did that. So, like, I can get that man credit where he was due. He really had the wave then. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, if it, I started out doing that and then it just digressed and progressed and I just started doing other shit. <laughs> so, how are you liking it? Oh, uh, it's pretty cool. I love it. Well, I mean, I get to do what I like to do and, and, you know, get a couple of dollars and have fun. And, I mean, it don't feel like work when, you, when, you, when you're doing what you love. Sure, so. indeed. Sure, indeed. So, do you think it's like a grind? Because, you know, all the comedians talk oh, yeah. about when they... When they first started out, they was someone was homeless. Yeah. Everything's a grind. I ain't homeless though. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? You know, my cup ain't empty, but it ain't super full. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm it grateful don't for run what us I got. Over yet. You know what I'm saying? I don't yeah. run us over. I definitely would want it to. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But um, yeah, everything's a fucking grind. It's a nonstop grind. Like you gotta think about it. If you're not active on social media and people know you for being on social media, if you don't drop a skit in a while, if you're not working and nobody sees you nobody's not seeing you, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you also need to be working, even if you're not doing a skit, you need to put something out just to in, interact with your people. It's a grind in different ways. It's not like in the 90s, you know, how a motherfucker would go and be selling a, uh, you know, DVD or doing stand-up shows. Mm -hmm. It's like everything your show is your platform on your, on yeah. your, you know, it's like you got your own TV show on your page. So people are steady watching, like, let me go to your channel and see what you're doing today. Mm -hmm. So everything's a, everything's a grind. Everything that you put forward to, everything that you want to work for is always going to be a grind, no matter what you're doing. So what's the end game for Drizzy, man? Where's Drizzy trying to be? Old ass next, lady? Oh, and when, when it's in, over with? Next five years, next 10 years, next 15 years. Five years, yeah. definitely like super peak career, getting that fucking bag. Mm -hmm. Maybe 10 years after that, still behind the mm -hmm. scenes, maybe getting the bag, not too much behind the camera, but still mm -hmm. getting the money. Cause like I never was a super person that always wanted to be like yo I want to be famous. I always wanted stability, money, money mm -hmm. and you know do stuff for my family and make the people around me that I love happy and you know have everybody comfortable. It wasn't never end game like yo I want to be famous, but mm -hmm. this shit just come with it. Mm -hmm. So I'm my my shit is to get the bag, get the money, get as much as the fuck as I can, keep mm -hmm. working, be behind the scenes, still getting the money, and just you know when I get old enough, just fall back and. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? Be that old ass bitch on the island somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, nice little cocktail smoking. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Have my uh, my little land and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so how is it working with your contemporaries? You know, we bring people up, and they always say things like, you know, the hate in Philly be this way, or like. You know, nobody won't fuck with your wave until it's already popping. Nobody won't fuck with it from the beginning. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, how's it been for you just interacting with, you know, your contemporary, contemporaries, other comedians in the city? You know, I think that's everywhere, though, you know? I think wherever you go, people are not going to fuck with you until, like, they see. But the, the people see your potential, though. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? They know what's up. But, you know, I feel like people who don't want to fuck with your wave and they see your wave is popping and they still want to fuck with you, you're intimidated. Mm-hmm. Cause you know what it's about to be. Mm-hmm. You know what it's about to be. That's, that's <laughs> you know true. what I'm saying? And some motherfuckers you just don't fuck with. Cause no, I ain't saying that everybody funny. Some niggas should be corny. Mm-hmm. And you might not want to fuck with everybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You might not want to fuck with that person because you everybody work different. You might not want to deal with. Yeah. You might not like the way they do this or do that. Yeah. So yeah. yeah just because you don't like something don't mean it's you know hate. Yeah, you know. Nah, that, that, in the new world. Oh, that's what they say now. Like in the new world, if you don't just absolutely love what everybody does. It's hating. And I don't think that's it. unnecessarily true. I just don't fucking like it. But, I, I don't think it's funny. But then it's the wild shit too. Like if you love every day somebody doing <laughs> You just You gotta find so a medium. Like, you gotta find the medium between hate and diggy. And, <laughs> no, fuck and that. If I love it, it, I'm making everybody know that I love it. Like, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. know how people be like, oh, I'm not posting it. I, I, I love it. I'm posting this shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. But if I don't like it, I'm just like, this shit was all right. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, but well, you more more power to you. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna stop your grind. But I learned in this world is you gotta be comfortable being uncomfortable. If you're not comfortable being uncomfortable, you limiting where you're gonna go in life. So I'm comfortable telling somebody like yo, your shit, but, mm-hmm. and then I'm comfortable saying like your shit dope. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's where you gotta be because man, you are gonna be an asshole either way. So you might as well be a whole ass. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. everybody has to be an asshole. That's I appreciate good. it. It ain't about what you say; it's about how you say it. You can tell somebody that shit ass and and and, and they nice and you know, it's, and be no, nice with it. it's no cordial way to say your shit ass. Mm-hmm. Like you could be like, hey. I mean, you done said shit about me and then be like, yo, Gus, that's ass. We'll be like, bro, it's anus. Nah, but I mean, even when if I, but the same venom. No matter how, if I say Gus, your shit ass. <laughs> or I'm like, yo, Gus, that shit ass. Oh, are you like, well, I'm not feeling it. Are you like, I'm not feeling it. I just think this. That's too that, many words. I'm not feeling it. Ass <laughs> is equivalent <laughs> to, I'm not feeling it. But you that know what? Shit, that's bro. one thing I like about my team, though. If I do yeah. something and it's ass, they will tell me. Like, yo, that shit butt. That shit ass. Or, I don't like it, Dress. Or that you on what that was a bad you on. Like, you know what I'm saying? My teams will keep it real with me. That's why I appreciate them. That's are we ever going mean? to get to see that stuff that was edited out that was ass? So we can laugh. Uh, I haven't had too many ass moments though, <laughs> <laughs> so I can't really speak about it. You know what I'm saying? But you know, we all keep it real with each other. Oh, I think you should have did this, that, and the third. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Definitely gotta keep a strong team with you. Yeah, I don't like yes men. Yeah, me neither. But Gus just always just that's what shit he into. You're a Republican. You, you, you're yes man. Yeah. A what? A yes man. I'm not a yes man. Moving along. <laughs> All right. Well, tell us what you got going. I mean, you, what you got going on? You said you had some shows coming up. Um, I actually have a hosting that I'm doing um, on Tabor Boulevard. I forgot the name of the club, oh, but if you follow me, if you follow me, I will be posting more flyers and more things about that uh, show. Um, April the seventh, when I'll be doing a little set stand up comedy, and I have a show. April the thirteenth, when I'll be hosting. So y'all gonna get me all night. Pause. But it's going to be fun. I'm going to have a good-ass time. Like, it's going to be lit. That's what's so, up. Everybody should come through. If you're not following me, then you, you won't know what the fuck it is. Because I really don't know where it is right now. I'm sorry, mm. guys. Forgive me. I wasn't prepared. My bad. But that'll give you a reason to follow me yeah. and watch my shit and like and comment and share and all that shit. So so give it, yeah, give everybody your um, social Grace media. Brown Beauty is D-R-I-Z-Z-B-R-W-B-A-U-T-Y. All right. You going, are you going to bless us with your, to stick around for a couple more segments? I'm sorry, guys. I gotta get the rally going. Actually, I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. I, I kept it real with you. Know, so it's gonna be like 15, 25 minutes. That's a good shit. But well, um, don't be a stranger. Won't be a stranger. I, mean, you, I appreciate you guys for having me. Yeah, come through. Bring the team with you. Let's talk some shit. Okay. Thank all you. Right. All right. Peace. Peace. <laughs> 
A Dallas bartender faces assault charges this morning for beating a woman in a deep Ellen parking lot. The fight was caught on cell phone video, and it is disturbing to watch. Jennifer Lindgren's live at Dallas Police show Headquarters it, with an update on the graphic, but you're and how show the woman it. is doing. Jen. Bro, where's the okay, fight? That woman went to the hospital Damn. yesterday for what she believes is a ruptured eardrum. That suspect, <laughs> Austin Sheffield, is out of jail this morning, and he is also <laughs> out of his job. Oh! And then cell phone video. You can hear bystanders gasp oh, and shit, disbelieve bitch, as a man takes oh, repeated uh, swings. No! That's that woman no! told Austin she pulled into the parking the lot out. near Elm and Crowder Streets <laughs> in Deep Elm and it? blocked Austin Sheffield oh. in as he was trying to leave. Oh. Police say he got out. Out of his car and confronted oh, with a gun. The car. When she no, 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 my hero. <laughs> Why did you hear it? That motherfucker bitches. Oh, you going to jail now? One more time, one more time. <laughs> he looked like a Game of Thrones character. He looked like Tommen. And then cell phone Boom, she slapped him. Bitch. Boom. Boom. <laughs> oh, oh. Yo, oh. That motherfucker like an MMA fighter. Nah, but they ain't show it in this clip. What happened was... Well, find the one that they show it. Well, I'll show it to you later. But All right. No, what happened was is she drove the wrong way down the street. Okay. And she tried to go into a parking lot. And this is a girlfriend. No, this is some chick. And he's like... He doesn't even know her. He a bouncer. Yeah, at the club. He's leaving work. Yo, he took so, his job no, serious. No, he's not a... He, he was just leaving work. So no, he was a bartender, but he wasn't a... So he was why did he just start uppercutting the shit I'm out of this bitch? You. All right. So she drives the wrong way down the street. Okay. So she doesn't know where she's going. All right. So she pulls in the parking lot. And asks him where to So he could turn around. No. All right. So he blocks her because he's trying to pull out. Okay. But she don't know where she's going, right? So okay. she's probably just some chick. Maybe like, it's like 4 o'clock in the morning. So he gets mad. Okay. He gets out the car. And they start arguing. <laughs> they didn't show it. He pulls a gun first. Oh, shit. He pulls a gun. <laughs> no, no, no. They didn't show it what I just had. He pulls the gun, and then she punches him while he's holding the gun. Yo! That's when he started hooking off on her. Yo. So this is what I'm going to just say about that video. But then she got, she got beat up. That video is like, I find comedy in it. Why? I You're do. not supposed to find comedy in a black it's, woman getting beat up. That was a black woman? Yeah, it was a black woman. Oh, no, that's not cool. <laughs> I mean, it's a little grainy video, but it was a black woman. Oh, no, that's not cool. He a bitch-ass fucking nigga. I wish I was there. Nah, that's not cool. I thought that was a colonizer. No, it was, it was a black woman. Oh, no, nah, that's not cool. Fuck him. Yeah, what bitch. do we think about the person who was taking the video? Probably was white. Mm. And we're not racist here, but... I mean, you pretty sad. I don't like it. I'm not. I mean, I'm not opposed to colonizers getting hit with seven uppercuts. That's the least they could get. For all the shit they done to us for over 400 years, seven uppercuts ain't never killed nobody. I would like to say, I, I hope no one gets hit. And that's my piece. And violence is as pure as the air we breathe. And so if somebody has to get hit with an uppercut, I hope it's a colonizer. I don't think anyone should get hit. That's violence. Yo. And violence never solves anything. Violence solves a lot. If I want the last slice of pizza and you want the last slice of pizza and I fuck you up, I got the last slice of pizza. That reminds me. Like a few years ago, I had a cousin. He was like eight years old. Came to my house for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And my wife didn't make as much macaroni and cheese as she usually does. Yeah. So I was behind the buffet line behind him. Mm -hmm. But it was one little corner of macaroni and cheese. Yeah, I'm pushing his little ass right out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> See, and, that, and I mean, and that's and that's violence. Yeah, I didn't know that was a black woman. Now I feel sad. There's sadness in my heart now. Yeah. But moment if it was, a, but if it was, yeah, moment of silence because she got fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> it was all funny games until you found out it was a black. Yeah, woman. she got fucked up. I don't know what made her throw the punch first. I know he had a gun in his hand. He ain't have a pointy. He put it down to his side. She was like. And he really hit her with like some MMA uppercuts, man. This shit looked like Ronda Rousey. Well, she she probably hit him because what happened was when he pulled the gun, she tried to call the cops, and she he smacked the phone out of her hand. That's what he kicked at the end. So he smacked <laughs> he smacked the phone out of her hand, so pulled out he, a gun. She hit him, 
he let loose on her, and then at the end he kicked the phone for extra credit. And so he's still getting arrested. Yeah, he got arrested, but he got out pretty quick. Yeah, ROR. They probably had you knocked out a black bitch. Yeah, you can go home. <laughs> That's how the system worked for us, man. I feel bad now, but if it was a colonizer, I was I was I was high spirited about that. Did I say that no nobody should be victim of violence? I said that right. That's, I just you, get on that's your thoughts. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Cover my ass. All right, cool. All right. So you murdered both Jeff Bezos, right? He got caught cheating, like fourteen billion or something like that. I'm glad it'll take like thirty something billion. Mm-hmm. So he got caught, right? Mm-hmm. Because the National Enquirer uh, wound up with copies of text messages between him and his mistress. Okay. So it has come to light that the the way that they got the text messages was the mistress's brother sold it to the National Enquirer for two hundred thousand mm. dollars. You think that's some bullshit? I think it's some bullshit. Either I that. think uh, I think I think that uh, the mistress was down with it. Yeah, if, I was, if I was trying to blackmail him and he wasn't he wasn't beat for it. And so then they sold it. He got two hundred thousand for it. Wife about to hit him for some billions, and I wouldn't even be surprised if the mistress don't turn around and say she pregnant or some shit like that, <laughs> and get in his wallet, and and everybody made to come up off of Bezos, and Bezos is single. But I mean, all right, if you had, he's like worth like, I don't even know how much. If but I if was, you had all that money, would you just that, break I, off two hundred thousand? I wouldn't be married. So then I won't have to worry about it. I already told you my game plan. Oh, I'm once trying you get a hundred thousand, the first the first hundred thousand I get, me and Miss Barksdale done. <laughs> and then as the money increases, it's all mine. Well, somebody gonna come take it from you. No, you ain't well, gonna fall for the okie doke. What okie doke? Condoms mm-hmm. and pistols. I'm well protected. Never trust a big butt in a smile. Not without a rubber, anyway. No. no. I think you'll wind up getting caught. I don't trust her. I'll trust me. That's all that matters. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not losing that type of money. Nah. I mean, I, you can always be like, do the right thing. But when you got that type of money, what is the right thing? You can do whatever the fuck you want. No, he about to give up thirty something billion dollars. So the fact that he has thirty seven billion to give up and still <laughs> has billions left just says a lot about him. And that he rich as shit. Yeah, and I just wish he made smarter decisions. Like when I got that type of money, I might just get people clipped. Oh, you about to do, give my text messages to who? Yo, meet me right here. I'll bring you some cash and just send the goons. Clip him, then clip the mistress. Especially some Philly goons. They no, sell you whoa, for a couple hundred. I ain't getting no Philly niggas. Man, I, I need top notch. <laughs> I need top notch. It is. I need those you. Those Ukrainian motherfuckers from Equalizer. They don't speak your language, just no, fly in, nope. kill people, no. and fly back. Show them the picture. Clip him, clip the mistress, clip the wife. After I put the insurance policy on her, and then there's more money, and then I raise the kids. So basically, you're trying to say, try to warn Miss Barksdale. If she ever come around some Ukrainians, you better watch out. Huh? Yeah, if, she ever, if, she, <laughs> if she meets the Ukrainians, it's too late. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just say, if you see them, if you read this, it's too late. If you see the Ukrainians, it's too late. Because once you see them, then you don't want to see them. You know what I mean? She gonna hear people talking Ukrainian. She gonna be like, uh-oh, it's a rat. <laughs> oh, my friend, we are looking for her. It's over. She work out. She walk out the supermarket. She, she yeah. hears some people. She ain't making it out the supermarket. Oh, dead black girl out ten. <laughs> Ukrainians done got out of there. Back to the airport. Mm. Yeah, man. When I got that type of money, I'm just gonna get people clipped, bro. Anybody that anybody makes it difficult for me. You wouldn't clip me, would you? If he made it difficult for me, like a lot of ratting he was doing earlier, I'd have had the Ukrainians walk in here on you, put you right where you need to be. Maybe not clip you, just give you a couple. Probably hit you with a couple <laughs> blunt objects to the, <laughs> to the head and face area. Break your nose and your legs. Just because uh, you know me so long, huh? Yeah, I mean, your daughters don't need to miss their dad because you talk too much. You know what I mean? But it's, they all have to, 
They gonna have to change my like my dresses or my wounds though. Yeah, that's cool. They that's bonding time. <laughs> they have to bond over injuries and head wraps. I'm like, mean, Daddy, you remember when I took care of you when he was you made it hard for Daddy, Mr. Barksdale? <laughs> How the fuck she gonna know? She ain't gonna know what happened because you gonna be like, I was in an accident. I mean, Ukrainians know how to make it all look like an accident. <laughs> I'm gonna just wake up, uh, yep. in the hospital. I'm gonna know. I'll just send you a text like, yo, you still wet? <laughs> Yeah, we like to thank everybody for tuning in to this edition of the So Unprofessional Show. Man, shout out to Driz for yeah. showing us some love. Really showing love, man. Shout out the headquarters media. Shout out TK in the building. Shout out Brown Girl. Shout out the whole Stay Talking Ed team. You not rubbing on yourself, man. Can you hush the fuck up? Thank you. Shout out to the whole Stay Talking Ed team, man. Everybody live long and prosper.